Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Reverend William Holden from Faith Delivering Center, Smith Hill, in the island of Bermuda. Today, we'd like to speak to you out of the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22 to 26. It reads thus But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are crisis have crucified the flesh with the affections and us. To live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Today we would like to speak to you on the topic, A walk bring God's nature, the fruit of the Spirit. However, we like to speak to you primarily on the fruit of love, the fruit of joy, the fruit of peace. There is a fruit of love, agape. Agape love is the love of the mind, of the reason, of the will. It is the love that goes so far that it loves regardless of feelings, but a person feels like loving or not. It is a love that goes so far that it loves a person even if the person does not deserve to be loved. It is a love that goes so far that it actually loves the person who is utterly unworthy of being loved. No four significant points about a gap in love. Selfless or gap love is the love of God. The very love possessed by God himself. It is the love demonstrated in the cross of Christ. It is the love of God for the ungodly. Paul tells in Romans chapter 5 verse 6, Every yes sinners met without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. It is the love of God for unworthy sinners. Again in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, for God commanded love toward us, and that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. It's the love of God for undeserving enemies. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. When we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. South little get me love. Is a gift of God. It can be experienced only if a person knows God personally. Only if a person has received the love of God, that is Christ Jesus, into his heart and life. Again, love has to be shed abroad, pulled up, flooded, spread about by the Spirit of God within the heart of a person. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, and hope make it not ashamed. Because the love of God is shattered abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Selfless or get me love is the greatest thing in all of life according to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 12 verse 29 to 31. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel. Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment and the second of life. Namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. To none other commandment greater than these. Softly though, get me love. Is the greatest perception and gift in human life according to the scripture. Paul tells in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, and now the body, faith, hope, and charity. These three, for the greatest of these is charity. 
There's a fruit of joy and terror and inner gladness. A deep sin of pleasure is a depth of a strong and confidence that ignites a cheerful heart. It's a cheerful heart that leads to cheerful behavior. There is the fruit of peace. It means to bind together, to join, to read together. Means that a person is born, ruined, and joined together with himself and with God and others. Hebrew word is shalom. It means freedom from trouble and much more. It means experiencing the highest good, enjoying the very best possible, possessing all the inner good possible. It means wholeness and soundness. It means prosperity in the widest sense, expecting prosperity in the spiritual sense of having a soul that blossoms and flourishes. There is a peace of the world. This is a peace of escape person and avoiding trouble, of refusing to face things, of unreality. It's a peace that is sought through pleasure, satisfaction, contentment, and the absence of trouble. Positive thinking or denial of problems. There is the peace of Christ and of God. The peace of God is first a bosom peace. A peace deep, deep within. It is a tranquility of mind, a composure, and a restfulness that is undisturbed by circumstances and situations. It is more than feelings, even more than attitudes and thoughts. The peace of God is second, the peace of conquest, John 16 33. It is a peace that is independent. Of conditions and environment. The peace which no sorrow, no danger, no suffering, no experience can take away. In John chapter 16, verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you, and in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be a good term and overcome the world. The peace of God is third. The peace of assurance, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, is a peace of unquestionable confidence. The peace with a sure knowledge that one's life is in the hands of God, that all things work out for good to those who love God and according, called according to his purpose. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the cold according to his purpose. The peace of God is food. The peace of intimacy with God is a peace of the highest good. It is a peace that settles the mind, strengthens the view, and establishes the heart. There is the source of peace. Peace is always born out of reconciliation. Its source is found only in the reconciliation wrought by Jesus Christ. Peace always has to do with personal relationships, a man's relationship to himself, to God, and to his fellow man. A man must be born, ruined, and joined together with himself in order to have peace. A man must be born, ruined, and joined together with God in order to have peace. A man must be born, grooving, and joined together with his fellow man to have peace. Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. For now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the battle of Christ. For he is a peace that made both one, both Jew and Gentile, old men, and has broken down. The middle wall of petition between us, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, having made peace through the blood of his clothes, by him, reckons out all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, 
you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked rest. And now has he reconciled. God bless you and God be with you. It's a prayer of our heart.